Welcome everyone to Now You See TV. Tonight we have a special broadcast and I brought David Carrico along with me. You guys know him from the Midnight Ride. Really our most popular and one of our only shows on Now You See TV. So if you haven't seen it, make sure you check out the Midnight Ride. But tonight uh, we're doing a special broadcast because um, there is this, this uh, I guess, research going around that is supposedly proving that Jesus was born on December 25th. And we are particularly going to be talking about uh, Dean Odell's presentation, The Mountain in the North. And the subject we're going to be honing in on is the date of Jesus' birth because he brought this video that we're going to watch and comment to. Uh, David's brought tons of resources. If you're friends with me on social media or you follow me on social media, you'll see that I posted a pile of books. David's like almost sitting behind a pile of books over there. There's so many books on his table right now. And if you want to see how many we're talking, and that wasn't even all of them. He had to get some more in the last minute. But we're going to go through these these things that were was said in this video, and we're going to bring them to light because our goal is not to divide. Um, our goal is to bring the truth to light the best that we can. We are researchers. God has commissioned us to research and to put out what we see and we put it out there now do we claim to know everything absolutely not um however we do choose to change our opinions based on evidence based on things that we see based on um the light of god's word and so tonight is that so we're not here to divide we know there's a lot of people in a lot of different situations and we don't pretend to understand every single one of those and in fact dean odell we've even promoted him on the show because of some of the book uh, a book that he wrote and said nice things about him. We're not here to bash him, um, even though he may have bashed, you know, some people in the video. We're not here to do that. And and at times, there, if you guys have been watching to me since 2016, me and David, you've heard us say some things that were probably, you know, if we look back on them, we could have said those just a little bit better. They could have said that a little bit better. But part of going live, part of, uh, you know, having fire in your stomach about God and about wanting to serve him correctly, sometimes you say things that, uh, may offend somebody, but we're not trying to offend people, but the truth does divide sometimes. But we are going get, to get to the heart of the matter on this because Dean did a really good job. It was a compelling video. Uh, I, call, I asked David on Saturday, I said, David, will you look at this? I was like, because I can't, I can't find some of these resources. I don't have access to some of this stuff. Can you please check this out? And I sent it to David. David called me not long after. He's like, oh, boy, I about had to change my pants after that one. That's exactly <laughs> word for word, quote for quote, what David said to me. And I said, well, listen. You could have went without saying Yeah, that, well, but, but anyway, that's all. <laughs> but so David had to change <laughs> that his is pants what after. I said. Yeah, it is what he said. So with that being said, David, I want to introduce you to the broadcast tonight. And, um, and thank you all for listening. Let us know where you're from because we are live, live, live. And tonight it's going to be uh, hopefully a blessing, hopefully an eye opener for some of you. Uh, some of you may not like what we're talking about. There's always going to be people that don't even want to see what we have to say because of a preconceived notion. And I understand that. That's how humans work. Um, but we want to try to be different. You know, people who want to see the light, want to see wisdom, sometimes they look at things that they may not. Uh, agree with right away, but they sit and they they contemplate and they look and you you sometimes when you do research me and David do a lot of research over a lot of different subjects. You have to look at things for what they are, test things, and so here this is what we're here to do tonight. David, how's it going? It's going very good, John. Thank you so much for having me on. I really feel like something needs to be said about this and the way it came about. Um, John did a complete um, uh, replay and like a watch party on the Dean Odell and Greg Locke debate, had very good things to say about Mr. Odell. And uh, he was on the Dan Badandi show, and I actually called in, the first show I've ever called in on it. I had nice things to say about Mr. Odell, and credit where credit's due. On the flat earth issue, Mr. Odell is very sharp, and we appreciate that very much. And also, we could say that uh, Mr. Odell uh, gets kudos for bringing to light a lot of the false doctrine within the flat earth community and kudos to him for that also. But right after, <laughs> you know, I go on Dan's show, a call in and all of a sudden this Christmas video starts making the rounds and we're starting to get all kinds of questions about it. So we really do feel like we need to give an answer to this, to give our position and to uh, do a little bit of apologetic on why we don't accept that December 25th date. 
Well, David, let's get started, man, because this is a that we. So there's several parts to this video. I believe the series itself was several hours. This particular cut of this is 28 minutes. So yeah, I think you can find the whole version of the video somewhere online uh, on his website, I believe. Uh, but there was a very diligent lady in our fellowship group on Facebook who really broke it down for me and said, this is where he talks about this, this is where he talks about this. And she uh, pointed me to this particular video. And so I want to say thank you. Uh, you know who you are. I'm not going to mention your name unless, uh, you know, I, I don't do that to people unless uh, unless they want me to. But our group is a private fellowship on Facebook. So with that being said, uh, David, do you want to go ahead and we start playing the video? Or do you have anything you want to No, we'll, uh, go right ahead and um, play the video and we'll start unpacking it just a little bit. Now, let's go deal with the date. We're actually getting through this pretty good. I'm actually surprised. I'm, I'm, it's moving faster than I thought it would. Um, the date of December 25th. Let's just break it down, all right? This is going to be a little tedious, but you need tedious because you got territory terrorists everywhere. That's three T's. I'm about to get me. I'm going to pause this because I know you're going to bring this up anyway, but this slide that he's showing here, David did his due diligence and actually found where he's getting this slide. David, is it okay if I go ahead and show sure, people yes, where sir, he's absolutely. getting this information? You go, yes, John, absolutely. Because, because I think it's right important ahead. that it is very important. We, we understand where he's getting this information. Um, this website, let me pull it up here for you guys. Give me one second. Um, David, I'll let you explain this website here. I've got it pulled up for everybody to see. This is, this is if you can see here, this is the slide right here. I'm gonna go from the slide to the page uh, here is his, um, sorry, hold on one second. Go from here. Sorry, guys, I got all these windows open, a lot of stuff going on here. We weren't going to do this live, but I, I thought that it would be better to actually do it live rather than, there's the, you know, this video. As you can see, the quotes here from Zechariah, the, the urban legend, the quotations that he has on here are the exact same as this website. Um, and, I, and I've got the pulled up here. It is thegoodshepherd.org.au slash y dash Christmas dash not dash pagan if you want to look it up and you can see this. And here is the article. Here is the slide that he's got screenshotted from here. So, David, why is this uh, an issue first off? Well, in my opinion, we're going to see that uh, I do not believe this guy is calls himself Father Joff. And this is a church in Australia. He calls himself the Humming Priest. And I'm not sure. It's kind of confusing. Uh, and he also there, he calls himself Our Lord's Majesty. And I'm not sure whether they're affiliated with Greek Orthodox or not. There were some things on there that kind of made it sound like, but it, a lot of things he said that they're not. So I don't know. But what we do know is that uh, Mr. Joff, the Humming Priest, is advocating some pretty strange things here, in my opinion. Now, up here, uh, you can go to blog Orthodox teaching. He calls himself Our Lord's Majesty. Oops, sorry about that. Here we go. And uh, he goes down and uh, there's also on this, he represents, if you hit his uh, the tag, Holy Tradition. And there he talks about how to commission a Celtic icon, uh, how to use candles, incense, the sign of the cross, how to kiss the cross. And, of course, he has his um, Christmas tree on the front. Now, you know, to me, I totally reject all of these things. For me, I want what's in the Word of God. These things are clearly not biblical, and uh, they're clearly, in my opinion, they are very, very wrong and you can go down there if you go down to the bottom and you hit more posts and if you go to his blogs on the third page right there to the right john okay yeah to the right to the bottom right to the bottom go down go down okay all the way there more post okay gotcha okay now go to page three page three and we'll see uh yeah 
for some reason it's go not... over here and go down. And... Okay, right here, this one. No, go down. Go down to the bottom of the page and let's get over to page oh, three. Page three. Page three. Yes, go. sir. Now go down and we'll see. There you go. What you really need to know about holy water, how to bless and make your holy water. And if you go out, click on that, John, and you'll see there Mr. Joff, the humming priest. Uh, and you'll go down and you'll see a picture of him uh, sprinkling holy water on a woman's head with a green bush, you know. And I mean, they have all kinds of icons. They got it all. And, uh, you know, this to me, it, it is wrong to add unto the word of God, the biblical worship. You know, I'm for the uh, I'm with the Puritans and I'm with those of the Protestant Reformation. Word of God, word of God only, that simplistic New Testament worship. Do not add these things to the worship of God. To me, these things are just 100 percent pagan. And we're not saying that Mr. Odell endorses all of these things. Well, what we're saying, this source is just no good. I mean, this guy, you know, and Mr. Odell uh, didn't say where he was taking this from. That was a smart move because this guy, you know, the old humming priest has exactly no credibility with me at all. We're going to see as we examine what is said on this article that uh, it is just totally, totally wrong. The old humming priest is telling some porkies. Yeah, and, it, and like I said before, guys, if you go to the, go to the video and then you go to this page, you'll see that all of his um, slideshow was screenshotted from this page. So mm -hmm. important to know, I thought. I thought it was important to know. Um, maybe, maybe you guys might want to check that out. You know, hey, let's check it out. So yeah. anyways, here we go. Let's go back to this video and hit the play button. I mean, a tongue twister, right? Uh, the date, December 25th. It's, the urban legend goes that December 25th is derived from the birth of the ancient Roman sun god. But when we look back in history, we find that several Christian writers calculated the date of the Lord's nativity long before the Roman celebration of Dies Natalis Solis Invicti, birthday of the unconquered sun, was established. The fact is, though, ancient Christian writers built the timing for the birth of Christ from the scriptural observation that Zacharias was on duty on Yom Kippur, September 23rd. This observation comes from information we find in the Gospel of Luke. Here's the Gospel of Luke 1, 8 through 11. Once when Zacharias' division was on duty and he was uh, serving as a priest before God, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord. Uh, to burn incense, and when the time before the burning of the incense, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. The angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side of the altar. Uh, in your King James, and I'm just reading this guy's account here, but in King James says he was the order of Abia, which that's very important because that lets you know he when he was in the temple, when he was doing this at the altar of incense, when he got word that he and Elizabeth would have a child when they couldn't have children. Um... So here's what we got. Based on this observation, Christians were able to calculate the birth of John, the forerunner, as being September 23rd plus 270 days equals June 24th. They then observed that the Annunciation of Christ's birth was six months after John the Baptist's conception. How do we know that? Luke 1, 26 and 27. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to the city of Galilee, uh, named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. So calculating September 23rd, adding six months, brings us to March 25th. Uh, through this reasoning, Irenaeus established that March 25th was the date of the Annunciation, or when Mary conceived, um, before the end of the second century. The Annunciation was being celebrated long before Christmas, since the Annunciation was miraculous, where the birth was mere a function of human biology. So actually back then they more celebrated Jesus, uh, Mary uh, becoming or conceiving Jesus' conception because they looked at that as a bigger miracle than him just being born, right? Um, but we know when he was born, the angels came singing. Okay, there was a I've celebration. got to pause for you, David. All right. All right, let's address this one thing too, that which Mr. Odell said about using the the course of a bia to uh, calculate 
the date of Christ's birth, and later in this video, we're going to see Mr. Odell reference uh, someone that wrote a book on the Book of Jubilees, and uh, he'll use this same reasoning, and he'll say that it's not Jewish tradition. Well, unfortunately, this is Jewish tradition. And I want to read from the Catholic Encyclopedia. I'll hold this up for you. This is a this is a big boy. It is the uh, there's six. This is quite old, and I got it taped up. But I mean, there's 16 volumes to this. It was published in 1908, and it has the official uh, Catholic imprimatur, and it has the article here on Christmas. And these are the guys, remember, these guys are the ones that are arguing for the December 25th date. And I'll just read what it says here on page 726. And he says, arguments based on Zachary's temple ministry are unreliable. Though the calculations of antiquity have been revived in yet more complicated form. Frederick Leben J. Christie Dest Erelosers of Munster, 1887. The temple, and here's Mr. Munster, who was a German, his reason, which not wrong being German, but he says his reasoning, the temple was destroyed, 9 AB, uh, AD 70. Late rabbinical tradition says that the class one Jeriba was then serving. From these untrustworthy data, Assuming that Christ was born AUC 749 and that never in 70 turbulent years the weekly secession failed, it is calculated that the 8th class was serving 2 to 9 October AUC 748, whence Christ's conception falls in March, his birth presumably in December. Now, these are the guys, the Catholics are the people, remember, they want this December 25th date, and they throw this out as just Jewish tradition and unreliable. They, and see, and this is smart, you don't want to, when you're building a case, you don't want to bring in spurious facts. And they said, we reject this. Now, I would give you, I will offer unto you a more reliable and more scholarly interpretation of the course of a bia. And I'll read just a little bit. John, you've read this too. You can comment on this. We'll read here from the um, Companion Study Bible, and this is Appendix 179. And this has a total different take on it, and there's a lot of information explaining this of the course of a bia. And it, place, it places, on, this is on page 200 in the appendix of the uh, Companion Study Bible, it gives the concession the conception of John the Baptist on the 23rd of Savan, the begetting of our Lord, the first of Terabeth, the birth of John the Baptist on the 7th of Nisan, and the birth of our Lord, the 15th of Tistri, September 29th, on the day of Tabernacles, John 1, 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt tabernacle among us. Now, I, I believe that Jesus was born on the, on the year of his birth, on the birth, Feast of Tabernacles. Now, can I prove that? No, not conclusively. And I'm not going to argue that dogmatically, but I can say I believe it. And it, it just makes so much sense in so many ways. So to say that, boy, this, you know, the, the scholarship there put forth by um, this priest and repeated by Mr. Rodolis, nothing but unreliable Jewish tradition. And and the fact that the to me when I watch a video like this when I when I hear people making such claims, I want to see the references. I want to see where they're getting this information. What is the reference for this Jewish tradition that he's speaking of? David, do you know? Other than this oh, website, well, I, I don't. Well, he he cites a book here in a little bit. Okay, on the Book of Jubilees. Gotcha. And here again. There are no references to any scriptures in the Book of Jubilees to even go to. So I, I'm certainly not even going to say that I can't speak to it because there's no reference given to speak to. Right. But uh, this in this way of calculating the December 25th date using the course of a bia, this isn't new. This is old. Yeah. And in the 1908 Catholic Encyclopedia, the guys arguing for the date, we're not even going to use this because it's unreliable Jewish yeah. tradition. Very good. Yeah, and I think it's. One thing I want to set apart here tonight is 
the references that we are using, David, can you you've used the Companion Bible, and you've used the Catholic yes. Encyclopedia, nineteen um, nineteen oh eight nineteen oh eight, and so if for any of these references, if you guys are curious, like I got to find these references, uh, David, give give one time the page number if you don't mind for the cat, because I think it's important that okay. people can yes. research this um, themselves if they like, and I think I wish that people would do this, and I yeah I really hate to watch a video that's like dominating kind of like, you know, dividing over something when there's no references, you know, he's expecting people to believe, believe him off of his own merit or whatever. And I, I just don't, I don't jive with that kind of stuff. I think that that is, um, yeah, misleading in a way. Yeah. The reference to the, um, from the companion Bible was appendix 179. Um, and that is on page 199. It begins on page, uh, 199. Uh, in the appendix section, and I think it even begins back on page um, 197. So that is there. You can look at that, and I'll give you the precise date, and we're going to be reading a little more from this article on Christmas from the uh, Catholic Encyclopedia. This is, uh, this is on page, this is volume 3, volume 3, and I read from page 726, and it is indeed right there, what I what I read to you. Very good. So are we ready to continue on the video here? Yes, sir. All right, let's do it. All right. Now, let's keep going. Um, so it says here, the date of December 25th is therefore derived from the date of Jesus' conception. So, and this is what the early church believed. Now, here's more proof. More proof of this fact comes from the Dead Sea Scrolls and the scholar responsible for this discovery, Shemar Jahu uh, Talman. He was a Jewish professor, uh, award-winning, by the way, Jewish professor. I mean, you can look him up. Uh, he, he, was, uh, he worked for many years. He, he passed away. He's an old man, but worked for many years on the Dead Sea Scrolls. On the basis of the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Book of Jubilees was found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Professor Talman reconstructed the priestly shifts in the Temple of Jerusalem service and applied them to the Gregorian calendar. Uh, with this knowledge, what is in the Bible, in particular, 1 Chronicles 24, Luke and Luke 1, 5 and 8, leads us to date December 25th for the birth of the Messiah. The discovery was made as early as the 1950s. But many uninformed sources have totally been ignoring it for decades and still do. In fact, this discovery has later been confirmed by other scholars, including Ann Jobert, Tommaso Fredrici, uh, Michael Lokensal. Uh, he was born on December 25th, and the virginal divine conception occurred nine months earlier. Christian calendars placed Angel Gabriel's annunciation to Mary on March 25th, but we know from the Gospel of Luke that just six months earlier, the precursor prophet uh, John who will be called the Baptist, had been conceived by Elizabeth. So Zechariah belonged to the priestly class of Abia. You find that in Luke 1.5. The archangel Gabriel appeared to Zechariah while he was performing his duties at the altar of incense. Gabriel announced to him that he and his wife would have a son. They were to call him John. He would be great before the Lord. Zechariah, when he had a vision, this vision was serving as a priest. It pointed at the order of his priestly division. Um, this is where the discovery of Professor Talman from the documents of the Qumran or the Dead Sea Scrolls comes in. Again, again, Dead Sea Scrolls have been proving to be a real gold mine for the origins of Christianity. Among the documents, the Book of Jubilees was discovered. It says the Jewish scholars were able to reconstruct the succession of priestly shifts relating to the service of the Temple of Jerusalem according to what is in the Bible, 1 Chronicles 24. King David had ordered that the sons of Aaron be distinguished in 24 alternating turns. They would perform their service for a week. So we know. So here's the order. I need a drink of water here. But the order we know from the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Book of Jubilees, that he was doing his course of Abia service, Zechariah was, between the 23rd and 30th of the month, All right? And it shows you the different orders up there, Coles and Joshua, all of the different ones, but there's Abia up there. So 
According to the Book of Jubilees, the announcement of the conception of the Baptist should have taken place in the last week of September. In fact, in the Byzantine arena, the whole Byzantine area of the world, um, the event was stated to be precisely between September 23rd and 25th. Once the date of the announcement to Zechariah had been fixed, the whole Christian calendar comes out confirmed. The announcement to Mary six months later, March 25th, the birth of John the Baptist, another three months, June 24th, the birth of Jesus after six months, December 25th, and from the conception of the Messiah, March 25th, around the time of the spring. Now, here's what's wild. This is all calculated, folks. Let me just go and take There is something here I want to speak to, and, and like I said, this gentleman that is wanting to use the book Jubilees and the Dead Sea Scrolls to prove the this by calculating from the course of a bia. This gentleman didn't discover anything. As we've already seen, this way of trying to calculate the December 25th date, it was already rejected by the Catholics who want to prove that date way back in 1908. It was already rejected by them as unreliable information to try to make their case. And there have been many people, you can find a lot of people will try to use this to prove the date. But it is indeed, uh, this gentleman didn't discover anything. It's unreliable Jewish tradition. I don't want to speak also to the fact about the, that was made here with this gentleman of it being established in the Byzantine world, uh, the date of December 25th. Here again, I'll read to you from the, uh, this 1908 Catholic Encyclopedia, and they admit this is on page 725 in the article on Christmas that in 385, now Constantine's edict was 336, and still it says in 385, therefore, December 25th was not observed at Jerusalem. So far from it being established, it was very much unestablished, even years after the Edict of Constantine, which we'll talk about a little more. So, um, no, Jerusalem 385 still was not keeping the December 25th date. There we go. All right. And, can... Or in the East, you know, in the East also uh, because of uh, the research of Ephraim the Syrian, Arepiphanus of Salamis, uh, as we know, the Orthodox Church, uh, they go for the date of... Uh, 6 January, yeah, and I, it just says here in this encyclopedia, Mesopotamia still put the birth feast 13 days after the winter solstice, January 6th. Armenia likewise ignored and still ignores the December festival. So, wasn't nothing established. Hey, this is all calculated from Scripture and what was discovered in the Dead Sea Scrolls in the Book of Jubilees. Not Jewish traditions. I've got to pause that. So, so far we have nothing then based on what we can see in the references. Even though he said this is all proved here, so far we don't have any real references or scholarship on that subject. So, so far he's off. And I, and like, you know, and, and like David said, you know, there are scholarly references on the subject that we can look to. Yeah, I would call this spin not research you hear me not oh it couldn't have been at that time because it was too cold for the priests to be out i mean the the shepherds to be out in the fields with their flocks no what most of you don't know is the average temperature during the winter in israel and i've been there during that time is 54 degrees that's the average temperature sometimes it gets colder and sometimes it's warmer it's actually very much like alabama some research on this, David, and this is something that is well known uh, to a lot of scholars. I mean, there's you can just look up Jerusalem monthly weather. You can look up the William Henry. I think you're gonna you're gonna be. Re I don't know if you're Adam Clark. William. I'm gonna read from the Adam Clark okay, okay. commentary. Oh, go ahead, David. All right, this is Adam Clark commentary. It's his comment on the Gospel of Luke, chapter two, and verse eight, and. Uh, he said, um, and he's commenting on this verse, which Mr. Odell referred to here. And uh, he says, and as these shepherds had not yet brought home their flocks, it is a presumptive argument that October 
had not yet commenced and that consequently our Lord was not born on the 25th of December when no flocks were out in the fields, nor could he have been born later than September as the flocks were still in the fields by night. On this very ground, the nativity in December should be given up. The feeding of the flocks by night in the fields is a chronological fact. Now, this is something that isn't, ba and it, like, see, well, it's not a matter of how the average temperature is, doesn't matter. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the commentators that had the documented facts on how they did it. The Jews were very uh, traditional, and this is how they rolled, and it was documented and known, has been known for many hundreds of years. So the, and, the, and I'll just read on a little bit. Uh, he says, uh, the feeding of the flocks by night in the fields is a chronological fact, which casts considerable light upon the disputed point. See the quotations from the Talmudist in Lightfoot, uh, Lightfoot's commentary on the Talmud and the Hebraica. Uh, he said, the time in which Christ was born has been considered a subject of great importance among Christians. However, the matter has been considered of no moment by him who inspired the evangelist as not one hint is dropped on the subject. Amen. A lot of Christians are worried about it. God isn't because not one hint in the word of God is there. Very good. By which it might be possible even to guess nearly to the time except the chronological fact mentioned above. Now, he goes on to say, Fabricus gives a catalog of no less than 136 different opinions concerning the year of Christ's birth. And as to the birthday, that has been placed by Christian sects and learned men in every month of the year. 136. And just ask yourself, of these 136 positions, why did December 25th went out? The Church of Rome. And we're going to talk about that when we when we get to the comments on Sol Evictus. But and then he gives a detailed list of all of the scholars on putting the the date of Christ's birth in the different months. And he goes on to say, but the Latin church, supreme in power and infallible in judgment, placed it on the 25th of December, the very day on which the ancient Romans celebrated the feast of their goddess Bruma. So there's, there was 136, and I got another book he will read. He says there's, there was 133 that he cites. 133 different opinions. It was far from a slam dunk. And the reason why December 25th went out, it was the Church of Rome and what was done by Constantine. So, you know, there you go. Yeah, and, I you know, the weather and all that stuff, you know, it, there's people that say, oh, yeah, it could have been warm up. But from everything I've read, they only let the sh people put their sheep out in the fields after the harvest, at, right after harvest and fall, yeah. from what I understand. And, that, you know, I have sheep, and sheep do die very easy to cold. I had, and this is an awful thing, but I had so many sheep die in the last freeze. I had just, they the barn got open just enough to let the wind through and froze them to death. And I'm not saying that this is, gets cold enough there for that to do that. I don't know. I've, I've, I've read things that it can get that cold. But, it, you know, there's, I guess that in and of itself isn't a reason to say it couldn't have happened that day. But it looks like, according to what we read in the references, actual references in history, that it probably wasn't. Yeah, and like I say, and there are people that argue against that. They'll, they'll say, well, it was special sheep. Uh, well, uh, it was um, warm that year. But, you know, these are just arguments built totally on assumption. So, uh, like saying, can I prove he was born on the Feast of Tabernacles? No, wouldn't, wouldn't even want to attempt to claim that. But the, the ludicrous uh, attempt to lift up this December 25th date to me is just really, really out there. And it's dangerous. We're going to talk a lot about why this is dangerous. But most definitely... Uh, there's, uh, you know, and I would agree with Mr. Clark. It has been enough for many men and many people down through the years to dismiss that uh, December 25th date on that point, and I would agree. That would be enough for me, but there's a lot more than that. The temperature in Israel is just drier. So you get this idea that they couldn't be out there, and in fact, uh, they were so at this time. Um, 
Are y'all getting this? Now, you getting this, David? If, if that's it? not enough, if it's not enough to have that information, first of all, from Scripture that we know Zechariah was in the temple, Feast of Yom Kippur, end of September. It's been reconstructed when we found the Dead Sea Scrolls, so we found confirmation of those orders when they would be doing their work in the temple. And then we simply calculate, once we know when John the Baptist, I mean when um, Zechariah and Elizabeth were told they were going to become pregnant with John the Baptist, we know, we calculate, it's easy to calculate. So it's, con it's confirmed by, again, Bible, Dead Sea Scrolls, Book of Jubilees, and simple math, right? And then we have the early church fathers, like I said, Apostle John, Polycarp, Irenaeus. The earliest known accounts associated with a December 25th birthday that can be traced back, that we know of, was, was Irenaeus. All right, he lived from 130 to 2002, but remember, he was discipled by Polycarp. Polycarp had been directly discipled by John. It was Irenaeus who wrote, was a prolific writer and defender of the faith. So he actually wrote about this. So that's why he, we, we only have the first writing of this. But it was Irenaeus who said in his writings that the apostles taught that Jesus was born on December 25th. Okay? Uh, and then there were others that it just, just carried on. I mean, him, time. I just got to give the big porky alert there. <laughs> big porky. Uh, what Irenaeus said about it is nothing. And um, I have here, uh, and I, I saw one fellow claiming that it was there in the section where he talked about uh, the, the temple services. And we have here, this is uh, the one of the books of the Apostolic Fathers, 38 volumes, and we're very thankful to have those in our FOJC library. And uh, they come in handy in cases like this. And Dan Badandi and I, <laughs> we started driving ourselves nuts trying to find that in Irenaeus, and it wasn't there. It's not in there. What Irenaeus said about it is nothing. And Mr. Um, Mr. Odell was kind enough to respond to Dan when we asked him, Dan asked him for his source. He said, well, Hippolytus said that. And since Hippolytus was a student of Irenaeus, we'll assume he got it from Irenaeus. So the Apostle John said nothing, zip, about Jesus being born on December 25th. Polycarp said nothing, zip about Jesus being born on December 25th. Irenaeus said not one word about it. And when we get to the quote on Hippolytus, we're going to show you uh, just what that's all about, too. But, you know, this, you know, to say that Irenaeus said that the apostles taught Jesus was born on December 25th, this is just wrong. Hmm. Yeah, it's important to know. And you're right. I'm looking at every bit of scholarly evidence that I can find and there's nothing that would say that I, he said that. I mean, there's nothing. I mean, I've combed the internet, combed the books, and you, like you said, you and David, or you and uh, Dan, were racking your brain trying to find it. It's because it ain't there. That's it's simple. Yeah, <laughs> and we uh, we Dan come up with some guy that said it was in this certain section, and I read it, and Dan read it. I said, Dan, did you see anything? And there said, no, there wasn't nothing about that in there. And there's not not a thing. So, and you know, I've seen this unfortunately a lot way back with people that want to do pre-trib and you know, it's a little harder to get away with now because you can read these online, but you know, back in the day, some of the porkies people told to try to defend the pre-trib rapture was amazing. And that's what originally compelled me to originally obtain this set. And I mean, they will just lie. People will tell porkies, and I'm not accusing Mr. Odal of that, but I've seen many, many uh, uh, instances where people will twist and take the church fathers out of context so badly, it is just amazing. But anyway, uh, uh, we can carry on. And here again, I'll read from uh, the Catholic Encyclopedia article on Christmas, and it says here, um, early celebration, Christmas was not among the earliest festivals of the church. Irenaeus and Tertullian omit it from their list of feasts. Origen 
said that in Scripture, sinners alone, not saints, celebrate their birthday. And I'm not coming against birthdays. I'm coming. To, I'm just telling you what they thought. You know, they, you know, they mention Irenaeus that he didn't even list it. You know, and going on, he says it says here. The first evidence of the feast is from Egypt, Clement of Alexandria, A.D. 200, and it was on the 25th of Pekan on the Egyptian calendar, which was the 20th of May. So the earliest documented record, according even to the Catholics that are trying to prove this date, was the 20th of May, and we do indeed have that. I have that. This is not conjecture. This here is uh, the this is volume two of the Antonicene Fathers, and you can read, uh, write what he said. This is on page three thirty three, Clement of Alexandria. He said, and there are those who have determined not only the year of our Lord's birth, but also the day, and they say it took place in the twenty eighth year of Augustus, and in the twenty fifth day of Pakan, which is May twentieth. So. It doesn't hurt to confuse the issue with a few facts. Uh. Hippolytus, 170 to 236, specifically noted December 25th with the birth of Jesus. They said, though he may have made his decision based on earlier, they say tradition, but earlier teaching from Irenaeus. And where did he get it from? Polycarp? Where did Polycarp get it from? And John, now what's interesting about this being traced back to the Apostle John is when Jesus died on the cross for our sins and John was standing there and Mary was standing there, Jesus' mother. Jesus said basically to John, you take care of my mother now. So who hung out in John's house all the time? Mary. Who would know when their child was born? Mary. So what I'm saying is, if you have Bible, you have Dead Sea Scrolls, and you have early church, early, early church, before the Roman Catholic Church, Strike saying three. this, Strike why three, have we out. ever doubted it? Torah heads. Satan's attack. Did he just say Torah head? Did he say Torah head? I think that's what he said. I don't know. He does say Torah terrorist and a lot of different Tor stuff. Torah terrorist, Torah head, and, and uh, man, Pharisee spirit. And we there might, are people out there. Torah heads. I don't there know there might mean. be. There are people out there that are Torah terrorists. There's no doubt. There's people out there that are just terrorists in general, just the mo the annoying kid on the block. They grew up. They didn't get enough attention, so they want to annoy everybody. You know, you have the sacred namers. You have all that. So I get where he's coming from because these people can be – um, you know, people would call us Torah heads. They would call us Torah terrorists, even though I feel like we try to give the most balanced view we can. We try not to be, you know, rude about it. And, and we understand that we're coming out of all kinds of traditions. There's traditions that we may even have in our own lives that we don't even know yet are not something pleasing to God. So, you know, we're trying to come at this from a perspective of, look, we're, we're, the truth is this. And, and I think why it's important, this topic in general, because if, in fact, what we're saying is true, then we are disobeying God. You know, in the scriptures, it yes. says, don't celebrate me. Don't don't do this the way the pagans do their gods. Don't do any of this. And, and if if, in fact, what we're saying and what the research proves is is true, then we are standing in opposition to what God has called us to do. Uh, as his people. So that's why it could be important. And that's why we even talk about it. Uh, so anyways, I, I thought I heard the word terror head. I had to interject there. I thought it yeah. was funny. And let me, since we're paused here, let me just speak to this uh, quotation of Hippolytus. And we have here, this is uh, volume five, Antonicene Fathers with the writings of Hippolytus in it. And this quote, which was supposedly a comment on the, his commentary in the book of Daniel, the fourth chapter. And would you believe, and this is the writings of Hippolytus, of the Apostolic Fathers, that quote is not in here. It is not in here. Now, the reason why, and, I'll, and this is from a Catholic website. You can go to a Catholic website, Biblical Biblical evidence for Catholicism. These people are defending Catholicism on this website. 
And he speaks to this quote of the supposed quote of Hippolytus. And he said, and he gave the quote there from a comment from the commentary of Daniel, which is not in his writings in the Apostolic Fathers. He said, unfortunately, there is scholarly dispute as to the authenticity of the citation. The entire manuscript, the commentary, was only discovered in 1885, so that the late 19th century shaft, 38 volumes said of the Church Fathers, which we have, which I just held up a volume, did not contain all of it, including the citation in question, and which the Catholic Encyclopedia Christmas was aware of the citation in 1908, which we also held up for you. So this is highly disputed that even Hippolytus said the quote then, it's not in these writings, and the fact that he ever said it is disputed, even the Catholic scholars who are trying to defend this December 25th date. Now I want to show you something Hold here. Hold on real, real quick, David. Where is this supposedly quoted? In the, uh, the fragments of uh, commentaries from Hippolytus, his commentary, I think it's on Daniel chapter 2 and verse 43, which isn't even in his writings. So so here, I want to read a reference here. Can you check this where you have the book, you have his writings. Yes. This, is where, this is where this says this reference is on this paragraph or in this thing I'm reading, another, another article, interesting article, which a lot of it has no references. It just says IBID, and I know what that stands for, but unfortunately... Um, it doesn't make sense to me. So the same paragraph, 562, page 325. Do we have anything in there that has anything to do with that? Because if not, the only source I can see is a guy named Finnegan who wrote a book. Yeah, he wrote a Mr. Finnegan, which um, he wrote a chronology. Okay. And I believe that in the text that... Um, Mr. Roll appealed to him, I believe. That's probably but, what it is because I, yeah. that's the only thing I can find on it. And I know yeah. that you guys are like, man, this is weird research. We're doing a research show right in front of yeah. you. We're doing our research right in front of you as we do this. So oh, David's already done Now research, on page but. 325 of this volume of the Antonicene Fathers, it's, it gets up into Cyprian. We're already out of Hippolytus. So there's nothing there on this page about that at all from Cyprian or uh, Hippolytus. So, and I want to show you too, why? Many scholars, even Catholics, that are trying to defend this date, they believe that this was never said by Hippolytus. Now, this I'll hold this up for you, and I put it with a yellow marker. This is from the actual writings of Hippolytus. And this, I say, this is Volume 5, the Apostolic the Antonicene Fathers. And I'll hold it up here, Fragments on Commentaries, page 185. And it says here, the Scolia... On Daniel the scolia on Daniel now what that means the scolia you can find scolia on the writings of Homer there are scolia on books of the Bible and what it is you would take a manuscript and you would give it to one scholar and he would just basically make margin notes and when finally the margin notes got full a lot of times they'd put it into a book and it's obvious when the commentary was written by uh, Hippolytus, that isn't in there. And it is just more than likely that it passed on to someone, we don't know who, we don't know where, and then it got in the margin note, and then it got found in 1888. So to use this quote, uh, uh, so let's have a recap. There's no proof the Apostle John said a word, no proof the Polycarp ever said a word, no proof Irenaeus ever said of the word. And the, the quote here, supposedly, it's all built on, it's more than likely Hippolytus never even said that either. You know, we really have a house of sand here. This is really a whole bunch of nothing. And to start saying, well, you know, the Apostle John was telling people that Jesus was born on December 25th. Man. It's a big jump. I mean, really. You know, you know I, that just really is uh, it's just really misleading and it's built on nothing it really is a house of sand it's very unfortunate yeah all right let's continue here on this and we find out that christians were celebrating this the celebrations grew as time went on and you say well we don't have a bible command to celebrate a birthday well you don't have a bible command to drive a car either 
or use a telephone. So I guess you better stop. <laughs> right? Some of this stuff gets to be beyond ridiculous. And I know the Lord led me down this road because, to tell you the truth, listen, and I know, let me, let me go on and tell you. I said it 2017 when I talked about this. I don't celebrate Easter with the eggs and the bunnies. Why? Because I know what that's about. I know that ritual of Please coloring the eggs was dipping I, the eggs. I just want to address this also. Um, and Mr. Odell compare, you know, he made the analogy, well, um, it's okay to celebrate December 25th, even though it's not in the Bible, because, well, we don't have a, a Bible scripture telling us to drive a car or to start a YouTube channel. And he says that's beyond ridiculous. I think that analogy is really beyond ridiculous. I want to read a scripture Agreed. in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 7. There's a difference between driving a car and attaching a pagan tradition to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and bringing that pagan tradition into the lives of individual believers and into Christian assemblies. Now, in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 5 through 7, Go and tell my servant David, Thus saith the Lord, Shalt thou build an house for me to dwell in, whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye me not a house of cedar? Uh, and then... and. David was saying, well, I'm going to build the temple. And the Lord said, now, wait a minute. Did I say anything about that? You know, David was a mighty man of God, but even David couldn't take upon himself to institute the worship of God. The worship of God is ordained in Scripture, and that is the Puritan in me and the spirit of the Protestant Reformation. I want nothing but the Word of God. Don't add anything to my Bible. Don't add anything to the worship of the living God. In um, 1 Samuel chapter 6, uh, verses 7 and 8, the scripture says there, Now therefore make a new cart, and take two milch kine, on which there hath come no yoke, and tie the kind to the cart, and bring their calves home from them, and take the ark of the Lord, and lay it upon the cart, and put the vessels of gold, which ye returned for him in a trespass offering, and a coffer by the side thereof, and send it away that it may go. Now we know the story. The Ark of the Covenant was captured with the Philistines, and they put it on a new cart. You know, it was laid out, and when they were bringing the Ark back, they put it on a new cart, and it was not according to the uh, specific regulations given uh, in the law, in the Torah, and it didn't work out real well for them, did it? You can read the story for yourself. But the point is, Billy, is that we want to make here the worship of God is not for men to make it a new cart where they add on this, they add on that. True biblical worship is prescribed in the Word of God. And for me and my house, we don't want any traditions of men added to it, not one bit. I want to strip away out of all, out of my life, every pagan tradition I want. And that's what I encourage people to do, to get those things out of your life, to heed to the Word of, word of God only. Exactly. And, and we understand that there are situations that people are in that they just can't get out of. I mean, there's there's so many people in our fellowship, you know, like in the, this year has been really something that I've had. I've just God's put compassion on my heart because we have a lot of people in our fellowship, a lot of people in divided households on this subject and others. And we always we always advocate that people stay together. And the Bible is clear on this in Corinthians. It tells us that if a woman is an um, uh, is a believer and her husband's not that she makes her household holy so that their children are not considered unholy right and this is this is very clear in the bible it tells us this so we always encourage women to try to not be dominating over their husband trying to do this now if you're a husband you do have a uh, a right to lead your home now a lot of husbands are in situations to where it makes it very very hard for them to do so based on whatever the case may be. And so I have compassion for that. I think that, you know, I, I understand that there's a lot of people that hold this holiday dear. They hold it so dear and so close to their heart uh, because it's a family time. And unfortunately, a lot of families do not get together very often. And 
it, it is is really hard. And like David said, we we try in our own lives because for for one, we're ministers. We try to live what we speak. We try to look at things and we see if we see what is honoring to God, and we try to do that because let's face it, there are there are curses associated with things that are doing wrong, and we want to try to do what's right. Now we've all done things in ignorance that are wrong. We've all been in a place of ignorance and we are all in a place of ignorance right now on so many topics nothing nobody knows everything perfectly um so we try not to divide over these things and i know that there's a lot of people that would say well you know you're dividing right now over this subject and ultimately truth does divide there's a what there is a truth to divide but we don't have to be rude to each other we don't have to hate each other we don't have to be mad at each other for it we present the evidence and we move forward we're in our, it's in our place to judge people um this is a this is a this is a labor of love on our parts because trust me you don't win brownie points by speaking about these topics. I just want people to know that we don't we're not winning brownie points talking about this. There's more people that are going to be very upset at what we say than are going to be happy with what we say, but we've chosen to lay down that part of our lives um in not trying to please people. And so we present things as researchers, we present things as people who try to live up to the Holy Scriptures, and I think Dean does mostly as well, giving him the benefit of the doubt. I think that he does his best to present things in a way that he feels at least is true. I do I do believe he was sincere in believing what he said here tonight. At least I believe that. Do you what do you think, David? Do you yeah, think I don't that? I'm not casting aspersions on Mr. Odell's intent or his heart or motivations, anything like that. I just take great objection to the the sources and the material. It's just, uh, as, as I was saying, this is just not correct. Yeah. And his sources are just extremely, you know, unreliable, let's face it. Yeah, and I want to give you guys that that reference um, in, in the Bible that I quoted about the family, and it's in 1 Corinthians 7, 14. Um, and I'm going to read it from the KJV really quickly. Just so I can read it, because I think it's important that people understand this. There's a lot of people that are like, you know, God's sending me to hell. My husband celebrates Christmas. I can't do anything about it. What am I going to do? Look, here's this is something that'll set your heart at ease because God loves you this much. This in First uh, Corinthians seven fourteen. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy? And this is a verse that I clung to a lot when I first became a believer because my wife was you know, grew up in the lukewarm church, grew up in all that stuff. So her observances and her way of life wasn't according to scripture. It was according to the church system in America, lukewarm church system. And so it was really hard. But I, this verse right here blessed me so much. And I would pray and I would fast for my wife. And, and here we are, you know, years and years later, over a um, decade later and in synchronicity with each other. And so it's just something I want to throw out there for those of you who are struggling and worried and, and upset that God's going to cast you aside because your spouse um, doesn't go along with you. So anyways, I just want to throw that out there, David. Go ahead. Very good. Do but I, go, ahead, yeah, let's go ahead and restart there. The eggs in the blood of sacrificed children. Same reason I don't celebrate Halloween. Pretty simple. All right. And it's the same reason I've never told my children that a fat man flying around with reindeer was giving them presents because I work for the money. <laughs> to me, it was a matter of principle, but I wouldn't want to lie to my children. Now, learning what we know now about the North Pole, the concept of Santa Claus, of good benevolent beings that can fly coming from there and coming into our world and trying to do good we actually get that testimony from admiral bird and from olaf jensen's story but it's again twisted and the devil's taken that santa claus story into our lifetime and blown it out of proportion i believe again to try to overshadow jesus so i want to say i understand not wanting to push the Santa Claus thing on children. I don't, never have, never will. I understand Easter is different than Passover. But see, here's what these Torah terrorists do. They get people all worked up on this stuff. They get them all worked up and make you feel like you're, you're, you're practicing paganism to celebrate the birthday of Jesus. 
and people start feeling bad and they start changing their their lifestyle which a lot of people i've been contacted they cut off you know going to, to family gatherings for christmas they they cut off just being involved and it's caused a lot of division and strife and just nonsense that didn't need to be I wish I could, I need to bring some of the emails and the, and the comments. Be, thank you so much. When I talked about this in 2017, thank you so much for clearing this up. Because we've gone back to having this time together to celebrate the birth of Jesus, to give presents, to decorate, to have fun, to bring family together, to get together with friends and neighbors. Folks, there's not a thing wrong with it celebrating christmas you hear what i'm saying and these people Dino. out here that push it that oh i mean you i i i saved some memes that were we, we shouldn't call them memes anymore she called them memes <laughs> and i'm just like here i got i just gotta pause it i, I, got, yeah, I just got too. to yeah I'm <laughs> so i hear tour terrorists causing division by not going and celebrating it um I mean, you could apply that. That's another straw man argument, like you were saying. You Torah, could terrorist, to, you Torah could say head, that I don't, well, I, Pharisee spirit. You're a Pharisee because you don't want to go out drinking with your friends, David. Yeah. You you yeah. cause a lot of division yeah. by not going to drinking with your friends, David. You know, it's the same thing with yeah. anything that we believe. You know, if we believe yeah. something's a sin, you have to stand on your convictions. It yes. doesn't mean you're trying to break up the party and go there and throw a stink bomb inside the party. Yeah. It just means that you are t making a conviction based on yourself. So another straw man argument from yeah, Dean. Yeah, I don't, is... I don't like it, man. I don't think that's no, good. No, uh, uh, no. Here's the only time of year Christians come out and uh, practice paganism. Me giving a gift to my child this morning was not paganism. Me having a fir tree is a decoration in my house. It's not paganism. Uh, it's not Nimrod's birthday. He's got a tree on his uh, pulpit there. It looks like actually, David. Yeah, what, that, what do we know about the tree? Let's let's well, talk about that for a second, please, because people they, they misconstrue this idea so many different ways. And the definition of an idol is something handmade and uh, put together, but it can also be nature. People worship the stars. People worship all different types of things. But what he has there on his desk there. Unless uh, unless it's a real tree there, I think that that probably is considered something, you know. Yeah. 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 I'm with you, John. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Huh? Now, let's just look at the scripture. And I all, all the time, this is the knee jerk response. Just like you pull the string on a Barbie doll. They say, I don't worship my tree. I don't worship my tree. I don't worship the tree. OK, well, let's just. Let's just take a clear-headed look at what Scripture does say. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 10, let's just begin in verse 1. Hear, and you will not hear the word worship in this passage. Hear ye the word of the Lord, which the house, which, excuse me, hear ye the word the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the way of the heathen. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. And notice that this is connected with the worship of the heavenly luminaries in the second heaven. We're going to read a little quote from Matthew Henry about that. But in verse 3, for the customs of the people are vain. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth the tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of a workman with the axe, they deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it good. Is, is it in them to do good? Now, didn't say anything about don't worship the tree. Said, number one, don't cut it down. Number two, don't bring it in. Number three, don't decorate it. Number four, don't fasten it in place so it can't move. All of these things are done. And some people, well, I got an artificial tree. You know, they'll make some excuse. But the, everything that people do to set up Christmas trees, they do everything. And it's not a matter whether you worship the tree or not. The customs of the people are vain. Pagan customs are abomination to our Heavenly Father. Now, let's read 
uh, Leviticus chapter 18, and let's read a, a scripture here, uh, beginning in verse 26. And if you want to call, oh, you're a Torah terrorist, this is the Torah. Call me a Torah terrorist if you want, Torah head, I don't care. People that call me names have to get in line, so it doesn't bother <laughs> me. But I believe that this is, you know, I believe the Lord never changes. And certainly, well, if you want to believe, I just did a video, what does David Carrico believe about the law? We just uploaded it last Friday night. If you want a full explanation of what I believe about the law, you can see it there on FOJC Radio Underground Church. But let's just read it. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes to my judgments and shall not commit any of these abominations. So some people will say, well, this was abomination to God back then, but now it's not abomination to God. That's okay. That is a pretty dangerous way to approach the word of God. Neither any of your own nation nor any stranger that sojourns among you for all these abominations have the men of the land done which were before you and the land is defiled that the land spew not you out also when ye defile it as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them, shall be cut off from among, uh, from among the people, their people. Therefore shall ye keep mine ordinance, that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs. For the customs of the people are vain. Learn not the way of the heathen. It is not right and proper to attach pagan customs to the worship of God. And it's kind of hard. I mean, you're you're going to have a, everything they do with the tree. It fits in line. Of course, we you could go into the history of the cult of Addis and this whole thing. I mean, really? You know, the Bible says to abstain from every pain of evil, and you're going to argue against the obvious truth that, you know, this isn't a pagan custom. You don't have to do very much research into the Christmas tree to find it is absolutely a pagan custom. And everything that people do to have their Christmas tree is outlined as forbidden in Jeremiah chapter 10. I want to read one, one comment here from uh, Jeremiah 10, but Matthew Henry. And, um, and you know, if you want to put your tree up and worship, it's on you. But for me and my house, and for those that I will be able to speak into their life, uh, we encourage people to strip all pagan customs out of their life and to hear the word of God only. Uh, this is what Matthew Henry said on comment on Jeremiah 10. Note, it ill becomes those that are taught of God to learn the way of the heathen and to think of worshiping the true God with such rites and ceremonies they used in the worship of their false gods. It was the way of the heathen to worship the host of heaven, the sun, the moon, the stars. So they gave, so to them they gave divine honors, and from them they expected divine favors. And therefore, according to the signs of heaven were, uh, whether they were auspicious or ominous, they thought themselves countenanced or discounted by their deities. Now, what do you put on top of your Christmas tree? Huh? What's on the tippy top of it? <laughs> A star. Yeah. Right. I, I tell you what. I, uh, um, what can you say, John? You know, I, I, we did a show last year, um, one year ago, almost exactly. Uh, and I've got it up here for you, the resurrection of the old gods. And in, in the other parts of these videos that Pastor Dean Odell speaks to, he says that there's only one reference for any of this stuff that they're claiming is pagan, and it comes from Hislop, the two Babylons, which I've heard that argument before. However, that is not true. In fact, it is proven in this video, if you would like to see it, and I, I'm, uh, we did the research, it's there, the, re the references are there. Make sure you check that out if you are looking for actual references of um, this kind of worship. I mean, the Golden Bough is a perfect book for people who are looking to see what were the religious practices of all the pagans around everywhere in the world. You will see that in every civilization, almost, that is a pagan civilization, this was enacted. The trees were a huge part of that. So it's it's really easy to prove that. And, and I know that people say, well, there's only one book written in the 1800s that even says that, and you can't prove any of it. Not true. Not true. 100% not true. Anyways. You ready to go to the video, David, or yes, do you got anything else? Okay. Yes. You can't prove that there ain't nothing in history 
that can prove December 25th, Nimrod's birthday. Not one. Oh, boy. We could be here all night, could we? Yeah. Uh, but right there. There's nothing that can prove that December 25th is Nimrod's birthday. Now, John, do you got Nimrod's birth certificate? No, I don't have it. It's right with Obama's uh, somewhere. I don't know where, but. If I look, I might have one over there in my pile of books. But no, I don't have uh, Nimrod's birth certificate. But the dying God that would die and be resurrected at the equinox and the solstice, this is the God of the mystery of religions for a long time. And I have, have a book here. It's called, it's written by Kersey Graves, The World's 16 Crucified Saviors. And in this book, Mr. Grave, who is doing polemic against Christianity, he argues, and he's got a chapter here, it's entitled, uh, The 25th of December, The Birthday of the Gods. Uh, and he says on page 69 of his book, Bacchus of Egypt, or excuse me, Bacchus of Egypt, Bacchus of Greece, Adonis of Greece, Krishna of India, Shang-Ti of China, Chris of Chaldea, Mithra of Persia, Sakia of India, Jau Pawul, a crucified savior of ancient Britain, were all born on the 25th of December, according to their respective histories. He goes on to say on page 70, it is evident from the facts just presented that all systems of Christian chronology are founded on mere conjecture and hence should be rejected as worthless. Well, the uh, position of the Catholic Church, which we'll talk a little bit more about before we're done, that should be rejected as worthless. But you see, and I, Nimrod was in this line of the, the God of the mystery religion, and it's called Mystery Babylon, by the way, it goes back to Nimrod. So absolutely, and at the time, uh, we're going to see the uh, founding of Sol Invictus in 274. Sol Invictus was worshipped on December 5th. The Roman god Bruma was worshipped on December 25th, and probably the biggest opponent to early Christians was Mithra, whose birthday was on December 25th. So, you know, I mean, really, Really, and when when Christians maintain that Jesus was born on December twenty fifth, you are placing him in line with all of these avatars that go back way before the our Lord came, that were worshipped on the equinoxes and the solstices, the dying God of the mysteries, and their argument is pulling many people into the pit of hell. Yeah. Because they think, well, Jesus is just phony. December 5th, he's just another one on him. But that argument has no validity because our Lord and Savior was not born on December 25th. Yeah, and there was, there's a time in history where we can look at in the Bible where people set up a holiday or an altar or a idol to God, to YHVH, the Tetragrammaton that says in the Bible, to the Lord. And... That got them in trouble. They were in the wilderness for 40 years because of it. And they set up this golden calf. And they said, this will be a feast unto Yahweh. But the problem is they they were celebrating it just like they would celebrate the pagan day with the bull worship. Okay, so there's there's a problem here. There's a problem with mixing Mithraism, which, you know, the bull and all that even continues down that line. But mixing this stuff together is a problem, and it was in the problem in the Bible. Even though they set it up to God, God didn't was not happy with it. He made Moses grind up powder, and they drank it, grind up gold powder, and all of the he ground up the calf, and they drank it because it was such a problem. So uh, we we can't take things in our own hands and and just go after celebrations that we don't even understand. You know, this this is the thing we we are quick to celebrate things we don't understand to do things we don't even know where they come from. But everything, there's nothing new under the sun. Everything has an ancient motive. Everything has an ancient root. And we're finding that with every single holiday, every single day of the week, everything has an ancient root. And it's very important that we, as as believers, keep our ancient roots pure, if we can, to the best of our ability in, in modern Babylon. Keep our ancient ways as pure as we can. Uh, it's very hard to do, but we're trying, and we're doing our best, but none of us are perfect, but we're trying. So this is part of trying here, I think. Yeah, 
and um, we'll go ahead and play a little more of this. We don't have a lot to go oh, with. I know. <laughs> it's going to uh, be a long Then I, I have just a, I have one more thing I definitely want to bring up here. Um, but go right ahead, John. We'll and over. what we're discovering is probably a lot of this depiction that these people get obsessed with. Oh, that's, that's, that's Nimrod and that's, you know, fertility and all kind of bad symbols. No, it's the mountain in the north and the circle of the earth. To me, that's more of what they're hiding than anything else. Um, but I want you to see this continued on, December 25th, continued on in church history long before the Roman Catholic. See, I know the Roman Catholic Church will tell you that they've been around from the beginning. They have not. They didn't come around, and, and it's, it's clear they didn't exist until Constantine made his declaration in 313 A.D., and even then, he did not have time to fully corrupt them. It, the corruption came over the next century and centuries to follow. All right? But the Roman Catholic Church didn't do everything, y'all. There was actually an early church before the Roman Catholic Church that did a lot of things, which is important while we learn about them. And we learn about what they taught. Um, but I want, I want you to see this because uh, the, the, there's multiple sources for this. But the scholar uh, Manfred Claus established that Emperor Aurelian established the cult of Dies Natalis Solus Invicti on December 25th in 274 A.D. Somebody say 274 A.D. A hundred years prior to this. Irenaeus said Jesus was born on December 25th. A hundred years. Think about that. Before Aurelian took December 25th and started celebrating a pagan holiday. This is what your Torah people push back to. That, that, see, December 25th. Well, you know what? My birthday's on December 29th. How much you want to bet there's an evil person that was also born on December 29th? Just pause. All right. Oh, Lord, because... Okay, this is, um, you know, this is just really amazing. And it's very true. Saul Invictus, the cult of Saul Invictus, was established by the Emperor Aurelian in 274 A.D. And Saul Invictus was worshipped on the 25th of December. But, you know, that just shows that at that time, when const in 336... Emperor Constantine of the Church of Rome began the official celebration of Christmas on December 25th, 336 A.D. So it, you know, it shows, I mean, all it shows is that the cult of Sol Invictus was there. But the reason why December 25th won out over the 156 other days is that in 336, Emperor Constantine made that the official uh, Christianity, the official religion of the Rome of Empire, Empire, and December 25th, the official date of Jesus. Well, sure, the call to Sol Invictus, it was there, it was around. I mean, like, what's the point, you yeah. know? The reason why December 25th went out, 336, Emperor Constantine. So, you know, I missed the point there, John. I do, I do too. There's, there's no point to be had there, and there is evidence that this date was celebrated prior to that. I mean, we've it's it's out there. Get the Golden Bough. This is a, that's a if you really want to know. I think. What do you think, David? Out of all the books that compile all this stuff, what do you? Th what is your favorite? Well, I mean, there's a lot of very credible resources, and the Golden Bough by Sir James, uh, Sir James Fraser, who was a Oxford scholar. Of uh, it is a very scholarly documented resource on the mystery religions and uh it is a uh, plenty of references book. oh yeah yeah and you you can get to the facts if you want to that we have we have gaggles of books in the fojc library we're so thankful on uh, ancient religions and uh we want to get back to source documents as much, much as we can and i mean the facts are just not with the argument Mr. Odell is trying to put forth. When you examine his sources, they, to me, they just fall apart and are just really uh, beyond weak. Calling them weak would almost be too much of a compliment. Because your birthday's December 29th. You're going to evil like that guy. No. 
We just happen to be born on the same day. Y'all want me to really freak you out? Here's a little quick little story. Back in 2004, I was contacted by a guy in California whose name was Dean Odell. And he was a Christian and an author. And his ministry was the same name at the time. And the reason we found each other is because I got the website that he wanted. <laughs> yeah, it freaked me out too. I think you're getting ready to get rid of me or something. <laughs> this guy's going to take over my identity. <laughs> but his books were not like my books. They were on other topics, other things. But, I mean, it was, it was weird, right? Um, but sometimes, you know, there's only so many days and there's billions of us. They're going to overlap once in a while. You know what I'm saying? Um, but notice it says the, the pagans were responding to the rise of the church and the subsequent collapse in popularity of pagan observances. They were responding to the competition provided by the church, and they were trying to usurp the date revered by Christians. It, see, it's been told us that we stole a pagan holiday from them. No, they tried to steal a holiday from us because it was popular and growing in popularity. Oh, Lord. Completely opposite of every Torah head's memes during every Christmas. And there it's it so is, funny. Torah every head. Christmas, I, I, heard, I thought come. I heard Torah head. I, it, Torah here head. they come with this stuff. I'll make a shirt that says that. But there it is. Here it is, the soul invicti. What do we see here? Here's your, your Wikipedia entry. When did he do it? Some 50 years later on December 25th. Somebody say it. A.D. 274, Roman Emperor Aurelian did succeed to establish the cult of Sol Invictus, an official religion alongside traditional Roman cults. All right, so there really isn't a whole lot more point. There is, I don't think there's any more points to this on here. He goes on talking a little bit and giving some analogies that I don't think are very good analogies or, or even apply to what he's talking about. I don't understand the, uh, the other denodal thing. I don't understand how he um, says, well, it's just a coincidence, possible coincidence or whatever. I, I don't know. It, it does none of it, none of it so far. And this is looking at it with a person. And you got to understand when I looked at this, David, what did I tell you to say? If he's saying what he's saying is true, I'm willing to say and tell people. Did I not say yeah, that? I yes, said that did. because said, I, wow, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. That's what I said. So I'm not coming at this just, oh, I want to debunk this. We want to debunk this. We're coming at this and we're looking at it. I was examining it because I was yeah. like, well, if I'm wrong, man, I've, I, you know, this is, this is something that I have to tell people, you know, and, and uh, so keep that in mind. And David, go ahead. Well, and I, and I think that's why something had to be said because not many people have at their disposal the wealth of resources that we do here at Now UCTV and FOJC to be able to document document this and this could really shake a lot of people into celebrating christmas as mr odell has bragged that he has turned people back to celebrating this december 25th day yeah. so i think something needed to be said because if you don't know <laughs> the the sources and the real facts it sounds very persuasive but i think perhaps uh, it'll sound a little bit less persuasive to people after we presented some facts we presented this evening, hopefully so. And I want to say uh, one final thought here. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the Puritans. Uh, it was actually in uh, the Catholic Encyclopedia even makes note of the fact of the resistance uh, within Protestantism. And even there was a time during the Puritan heyday I think the date was 1644 that uh, the Parliament uh, actually made the celebration of Christmas illegal in England and also in uh, some of the colonies. That was also the case. Now, I want to say a little bit about the Puritans. And the Puritans, uh, their, uh, their whole spirit behind them was uh, sola scriptura, which was from the battle cry of the Reformation, and for them to adhere to the Word of God, Word of God only, not to add any 
trappings of man-made traditions or paganism at all into their worship. I'm on board with that 100%. You know, sign me up with that. Now, in 1662, there was what was called in England the Act of uh, Uniformity. And basically what the uh, government of England did, they passed a law that said, that, and that the Church of England was a state church, that any minister that holds a service anywhere in England, they had to use the Book of Common Prayer as their guideline. Well, the Puritans said, there's only one head of the church. It's not the king, it's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we cannot allow man to dictate the way we conduct ourselves when we assemble to worship the Most High God. And I'm with them 100%. And, and, and in 1662, there were around uh, 1,700 ministers just in the area of London that were ejected from their pulpits by this law passed by the state. Now, I want to read, and here is, uh, I have a book here, it's called Sermons of the Great Ejection, where, and some of the people that I admire the most, uh, we've got John Owen, John Bunyan, Thomas Watson, Stephen Charnock, uh, a lot of the men I have a lot of respect for because not only were they brilliant uh, dedicated servants of God, but they had conviction. They walked away from their pulpit rather than compromise their standards. You don't get integrity like that anymore, very, very rarely. And uh, I want to read, in, in this book, I'll hold it up, uh, Sermons of the Great Ejection. And in this book, there are, they would preach their final sermon. And there were many of them, famous ones, uh, Thomas Brooks, uh, Thomas Watson, and some really great sermons here of their final sermon on the great ejection and the stand that they took. And also in the back of this book, there's the nonconformist catechism. And uh, that's what Matthew Henry was. He was a nonconformist. That's what John Gill, the Baptist, was, a nonconformist. And you had nonconformists out of different faith traditions. And because they wouldn't compromise uh, the integrity and the principles of the Word of God. But I'll just read uh, what they say about uh, the worshiping of days. And in this nonconformist catechism, it says this. This is on page 271 of this book. It's point 51 in the nonconformist catechism. It says, what do nonconformists object to? says, what do nonconformists object to the appointment of these holy days? And it says, such observances encourage superstition and will worship and are a tacit reflection of the great head of the church who has required no day to be kept holy but the weekly Sabbath. They said, these days are not in the word of God. We won't keep them. We will not have man and, and the king force these days upon us. So, that was the great ejection, and it just went from there, and the persecution escalated against the Puritans from there, the Five Mile Act, and there's a lot more history there. But I want to say this. At the time of the great ejection, 1662, there was a lot of really, uh, and of course, this was really a traumatic event, and there were, I want to say that there were people that stayed in the Church of England that were good men. They were solid men. They taught the Word of God straight. They, they lived holy lives. They were sound in doctrine. And they said, we can honor the day by preaching a sermon on December 25th without adding paganism to it. And many of them did that. But did it not open the door? Just like the Puritans said, this is going to open the door to paganism. Right now, the Church of England is so far down in the sewer that you can't tell where the smell's coming from. Let's just face it. Let's just say it like it is. So that's what we're saying here. You know, you do not add to the worship of God. That's, that's my position. That's what I advise people. I'm with that. Let's get back to Sola Scriptura. Let's get back to biblical worship, and let's do our very best to uh, bring honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And what we say with regard to Christmas, it, it doesn't come from a Pharisee spirit, but it comes from a heart that desires to conform ourselves the very best we can to God's Word to be pleasing to Him. Amen to that. And, you know, he, he did say something that I forgot to mention. He did say something about this can be pagan, that can be pagan. 
pagan is defined as a spiritual practice not associated with serving the one true god it is that it is a religious practice it's not just oh that the pagans used to use telephones so now it's pagan no it's a practice a spiritual practice that's what we're getting at here they, when people use that argument it is um it's it minimalizes the truth of the matter big time paganism is completely different than just because the pagans may have used this now it's pagan no it was a spiritual practice associated with it so that we understand that uh, David, you got any last words before we close out here? Well, I just want to say thank all of you for joining us here on Now You See TV. We decided, we decided probably less than an hour before the show, well, let's just go live. So yeah. we did. So we we're thankful for all of you that uh, tuned in to watch and for all of you that will watch this on the replay. And like I say, I, this isn't done with any personal angst against Mr. Odell. Of course, if you might not want to believe that, but it's not. Uh, if we just have to take a stand on this position and present uh, that which we do. But... Uh, it is certainly not with any aspersions cast upon his motives or intention of his heart. So with that, uh, thank you all so much, John. Anything uh, else? Well, uh, tune in to, it's not quite tomorrow yet, but tune in tomorrow. we got four minutes till midnight here. Tune in almost today. Later on for the midnight ride, we're going to be looking at the possibility is Donald Trump possibly the Antichrist? There's a lot of people saying that's possible. There's a lot of evidence out there that we're going to look at. And of course, I, you know, I, I just like when we did the show about King William, I don't know that he's the Antichrist. I don't know. It might be Donald Trump. I don't know. Might be. We're going to look at it. And so I'm not, I'm not a Democrat. Just so you guys know that there's going to be people accuse me of being a Democrat, being a liberal, uh, getting paid to do this, whatever. Absolutely not. We're looking at the evidence. It'll be a fun show. There's already people arguing in the chat about well, it. They've yeah. been there doing it for two days now. So <laughs> so it'll be an interesting one. <laughs> yeah, and um, that'll be Saturday. Now tomorrow's Friday. And tomorrow, Friday night, FOJC Radio, 6 p.m. Central, we will be ministering uh, our Friday night flagship broadcast. So you're all welcome to tune in for that. Uh, go to our website, FOJCRadio.com. It's on our, we're on Internet Radio on our Friday night broadcast. So we just really appreciate uh, all the listeners here on Now You See TV. And uh, we just thank you so much for allowing us to present uh, that which we believe and have found to be true in the Word of God. Thank you guys so much. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this content. We do this all the time. And so make sure you check it out. We've got so many videos. Uh, hit the like button for us. Share this out if you're you know looking to help somebody with the resources on this. Please do that. We thank you guys so much, and we'll see you guys um, tomorrow and the next day and uh, probably almost every day after that, hopefully, right?